All right, so let's jump into it today. ETH is roaring, and we're going to take a look and a deep dive on where it's going and why. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. In the co-pilot seat, Lisa Francoeur. At your service. Here we go. It's rock and roll. Ethereum's let's, roaring. Let's ju- well, okay, so we've got a couple of things happening right now. You've got Bitcoin on the fly. You've a got- rising side raises all ships, Paul. And you've got Bitcoin. So mm-hmm, the two mm-hmm. the two masters of the universe are out there pushing, and you've got kind of the whole alt- altcoin brigade fo- following suit. That's right. Right now. So the market's up pretty considerable. I want to jump to this first story. Here's what traders expect now that ETH's price is over 3K. First of all, we did a, a video last week, That's London right. Hard Fork. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, and we kind of looked at and predicted what we saw would be an over 3K run on ETH. It did happen. Uh, some interesting things You're welcome. here. <laughs> <laughs> some interesting things here. Uh, this week's London Hard Fork completed. No hiccup. Everybody was looking at 31. It's made it. And we've looked at some pretty bullish uh, momentum uh, you know, scenarios that have kind of played into this. So here's my thing. Um, I'm still always that forever pessimist. Okay. And I'm always worried about, are we getting <laughs> baited into a bull trap? You know? I mean, listen. This uh, is a high bull trap. To, to, your, to your pessimism, I'm a uh, eternal optimist. <laughs> and um, I've, I've been very vocal about my affinity uh, for Ethereum. And I think that one of the things about the London Hard Fork uh, that may not be getting as much attention is the number of uh, the number of um, coins that are being burned. Yeah. Right? So when you look at millions upon millions of coins being burned, that means that the supply is sure. decreasing. The demand, on the other hand, is not decreasing or abating. It's continuing to rise. And that right there is what's a part of what's driving the value. Yeah, and I would agree that that to a certain extent, but you remember EIP fifteen fifty nine did not really address the whole transaction scenario. Correct. Uh, you still have very slow transactions on ETH. You still have a scenario where the cost has not been dramatically reduced. It's been reduced, reduced some. This is primarily on the miners. That's you know, correct. In terms of the, their profitability, I did though point out this uh, topic right here. Rec Capital. This was a tweet. Uh, ETH manages a dip, but not deep enough. Now, the point about Rec Capital is he has not been a huge ETH lover. Sure. But, I mean, he. You know, I would say he's very conservative in some of these. And a lot of times he'll pick uh, losers and winners. But I was surprised that he was very strong on where ETH is going. So. And let's not forget, you know, we have bad. Elon Musk talking about it's in his portfolio. Yep. Um, we also have Raul Paul, who's like oh, he's, one of the most bullish. He is the man. Um, yeah. When he's it comes a, to ETH. I don't know if he would consider himself an Ethereum maximalist. Oh, but yeah, for sure. 20K uh, for one coin. Yeah. Uh, we're literally just scratching the surface. But one thing I will say to address the uh, issues with the transaction fees is that, you know, savvy users... Um, we have to be careful in fees. You know, you don't want to pay more than absolutely necessary. So just kind of keep that in mind. But the last thing I'll say in relation to ETH is that the utility, you know, far surpasses um, NFTs, for example. And there's so many different coins being built on the Ethereum blockchain that um, I'm very excited to see, you know, what the future holds. So I'm a long-term investor here. I'm not trading. So... To your point here, uh, Ethereum burns 36% of mm-hmm. new coin issuance over the last two days. Uh, since the act- activation, 5,000 E, 14 million. So not not dramatic, but that's a significant amount, you know, to a certain extent. Sounds like scarcity to me. Average free <laughs> average fees on Ethereum have increased slightly since the upgrade, the, since, since it went live. So that, again, goes back to my whole concern on this whole fee architecture. Still, ETH 2.0 is going to be the holy grail. I know that's into next year, uh, and Vitalik and his team are kind of, to a certain extent, his whole statement in the past has been that they're not, it's not a technology barrier that they're dealing with, it's people. That's right. You know, that they're trying to get to, so. So let's pick up this story right here, which is the buying spree on the top 10 Ethereum wallets now owned. Ah. This is a big number. Mm -hmm. 20.5% of ETH supply. That's, That's 10 I mean, 10 wallets. But here was the thing that's very interesting. And like, we, we talk about when a good time to get in and to get out is, and they bought the dip. Yeah. You know, they, they realized profits, and then they, on the dip, that was when you started to see a pretty substantial uptick in, in, in purchasing. So, you know, it's like, 
you would think that would spread out a little bit. I mean, a Bitcoin, it's like the top 100. You know, there's some there's some variations. But here's the thing. When we move to a proof of stake, you mm -hmm. know, the way that proof of stake works is that the more coins you hold, the more um, influence you have when it comes to validating transactions on no the doubt. network. Yep. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that kind of parlays into the growth of, of the network. Back into the story, examining a behavior of top 10 largest ETH wallets, analytics or sentiment, this is the one that pulled mm -hmm. this. And they're a blockchain. We use them a, co a couple of times a month here on pulling down data, but they've basically been tracking. And in fact, they had uh, taken profits in mid-May. Mm -hmm. So they kind of knew this was coming as the asset price skyrocketed. That was the $4,400 price yep. uh, of around $4,400 at the time. Those addresses had sold off some portions and they were responsible for about 18% of all ETH in circulation. So they've gone up a little bit in terms of where it's going, but they did outline now that they have accumulated 2.1% more in the last 41 days as a result. That didn't seem like a lot to me. Sure. You know, with the fact that it, ETH went down to 1800 bucks, mm -hmm. I, I felt like if I was an ETH, and I am an ETH holder, I, that's when I accumulated. You know, I accumulated ETH in the 18 to $2,300 oh. range. It was, sure. it was totally undersold at that point. Yeah. Like, it was a great time to get into the market. And I think that there was uh, a bit of skittishness in relation to the hard fork and how that would impact the, um, how that would impact the network. But all in all, I mean, listen, people are very, very bullish on ETH. Will the bull run continue now yeah. that it's rebounded? Do you have any price predictions, Paul? I'd like to put them on the spot. All right, so we're <laughs> gonna look at two things. One is we looked at ETH, and we've been looking at it over the past 30 days. We've stayed on it pretty tightly uh, for all of you, because I know there's a lot of ETH people out there and you guys are just into it. Uh, so we pulled up our data back uh, right here, which was in June 14th. We ran that sentiment score or that sentiment score. 4816, it was soft. And you can kind of see where and what happened with ETH. It was on its way to its, uh, what was at the time, a pretty good uh, potential purchase price, with the, which was around the 18, uh, even the $1,700 price range. We then re-ran a sentiment bubble. This was the one that was to me with the most important that pulled ETH up to 59.64 from 48, mm -hmm. big jump, and then amplification absolutely skyrocketed to 60.22, and that was huge because the updated amplification here just yesterday, August 9th, yep. was now 63.71, and then this is the run-up that we're seeing right now. Very little outside of what we're predicting there in terms of where ETH is moving. So we got some blue water here to show you, but before I do that, I wanna just remind you all, these are market movers. Mm -hmm. And the key here on market movers is we pull together research, a little bit of love in the industry, and then we put some technical analysis on it and hopefully give you guys a direction to go, but it's not investment advice, purely investment opinion. Uh, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're close to right. I feel like we hit it more than most people on YouTube right now. <laughs> You know, we got we got a good win going. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'll add, though, according to TradingView.com, Paul, is that when you look at the moving averages across like 10, 20, 30, yep. all the indicators signal buy. Yep. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how that translates to uh, Ethereum continuing to roar yep. or not. Yeah. To the chart. And that is the blue water right here, kind of purple water. Um, so we're we're currently here at the mark and hovering around that thirty-one to thirty-three uh, dollar or thirty-three hundred dollar price point on ETH. Sixty. Remember, sixty-three. I want to jump into this uh, this call out right here. Mm -hmm. This right here, big move from this right here in this period is where we were scoring that. Now we're on this range right here. We're both sentiment are rising, mm -hmm. but also amplification is moving as well. So this right here has a good, strong bullish indicator from the kind of data that we track. And when you look at the zones right here, the only one that I'm a little concerned about mm -hmm. is gonna be around August 17th. And that's this guy right there. Mm. The the concern, anytime I see any of those that kind of hook down, and we've talked about this uh, on a recent Doge video we just did, these little drops after a big climb always indicate a little bit of movement downward. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is if you don't see a big flume come out of that in terms of how amplification is looked at, that's the number of note, the note, the note effect yep. of how people are really talking about it. I'm in the, you know, I'm really investing or I'm jumping in on, on uh, social media a lot and really talking about the positivity of a particular project. 
When it gets narrow like that and starts to get on a pipeline, which is this little area right here, I want to kind of draw this out. Mm -hmm. This little area right here is where it gets really interesting. It's also right here is the line about where we get really mushy on data. So this right here has a small amount of data set versus this whole area right here. A lot more data for us to look at so we can be, be a little bit more confident for this run. And we're looking at the data on a seven-day basis. Yep. So we want to be very you know, yep. transparent in you know, the timeline associated with what we're evaluating. But what I will say is that you know, with Ethereum you know, taking its place in the spotlight, there was a lot of conversation, a lot of conversation around you know, the London hard fork. Yep. So you know, now that we've crossed that milestone, um, how much of a, a topic of conversation is, you know, will Ethereum be? Yep. Well, I think here's the thing for you guys when you're looking at, at ETH right now, is this the place to buy at around the 30, you know, 33? I mean, I know it's getting expensive and I know this is definitely not the $1,800 days uh, any longer. But if you are dollar cost averaging up, this is just a way to do it. I've been doing it and you just continue to pull your uh, track up because ETH is going to be one of those that is really going to, uh, I think, fly. And into... 2022, this is what Raul Paul talks about, yeah. is that we could see this run 20, into uh, Q1 of yep. 2022. So this will be really interesting to track. We're going to stay very tight on it. But I have to ask, do you think that there's a possibility for Ethereum to unseat Bitcoin as the front runner in the space? Market cap, mm. maybe. Market cap for sure. Price wise, obviously not, but uh, pr market cap is definitely a potential. Last point here. By the end of August right now, out here in the zone that we don't typically report on is around 4,500. So that's a big jump right through here that we could see. Hurricane ETH is on Ooh, its way. Well, for you traders out there, I don't envy you. Yeah. <laughs> this is one it's I got be, diamond hands on. You know what I mean? This is going to be fun to watch. All right. So you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now. Make sure and give us a like on Spotify. Thanks again for tuning in on Spotify. If you want to see all these charts, though, you got to jump in on YouTube. Hello. Make sure that you're clicking that subscribe button. If you haven't already, click the bell so that you can be alerted to these new videos. And of course, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Ethereum, legislation? Look, your input helps inspire our content and what we cover. So let us know what your thoughts are, what you want to hear about, and keep watching to keep learning to keep earning. I like that. You always have the good rhymes. I at have the like end. a, well, you know, I'm a rapper, so there's, I'm a crypto rapper. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right, you guys want to hit us up on uh, Twitter? Just uh, do it at Paul Barron. Uh, you can get me there. And of course, if you have an idea for a show, we also have an email to our producers. You can send that to producer at revernetworks.com. That is uh, kind of the parent company of Paul Barron Network. We run a couple of different networks here under the channel. We are heading toward the 100,000. Sub marks, so you guys keep spreading the word to your yeah. friends, your family, your buddies. It's a movement, Paul. This is a place to go. It's a movement. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.